Land. So today we are talking about multi-component products in Esha and the principle behind components as you remember from our ingredient declarations is that in many cases you will have ingredients that have ingredients. Well let's say you as a product developer are developing a variety of different products that each have components. How do we do this in Esha? Well there's a little bit of a trick to it but it's pretty straightforward. So at the end of this video, you will be able to create a multi-component recipe from your own formulated ingredients. So let's just jump in and it will become evident as we do this together. So I always joke that we are friends and um, remind you that we are working with the guidance from Food Labeling for Industry to format how we're doing all of the different rules. But we're letting Esha take charge here in terms of how we're interpreting it. So we are friends. I'm just going to jump straight out to my Esha splash top here. And again, if you haven't started in the Esha video series yet, I do recommend you start back at the beginning in terms of understanding how to put in your own recipe from scratch um, and how to access splash top and so on. So I'm going to assume that you know that already. And what I did, I'm going to imagine I am making pizza. And so let's say first off, I've got a recipe for my pizza crust. I've got flour, I've got tap water, I've got yeast, I've got salt, I've got some olive oil. Sounds like a great pizza crust. Uh, don't quiz me on these numbers, I just randomly pulled them from my head. But if I was taking my recipe, I would be entering everything into the database, again, preferably by weight. Now I've got my tomato sauce. So. Uh, again, don't scrutinize my recipe. It's super garlicky, but this is for uh, pizza sauce. So lots and lots of fresh basil. And again, we remind ourselves that the ingredients are listed in the ingredient declaration as if they were going to the mixing bowl. I realize in this case, they're not going into a mixing bowl. They're going straight to a pot, but we are uh, chucking everything into that pot and yeah, we may be straining out skins, we may be doing some additional manipulation, but this is how it's going to be entered. I've entered each of these different recipes. Oh, I've got a sausage crumble here, so I'm taking some uh, uh, coarse ground frozen raw pork crumbles, and we're adding some anise seed, some cayenne, some cornstarch, some black pepper, some table salt, some water, and we're going to fry that down into a pork, uh, spicy pork crumble, and... Well, here's, here's the thing. I do have to remember that I'm working in Splash Top, and so when I save anything here, if I want to come back and revisit it, I need to save it and save it to file. But at the moment that I go into file here and I do a, I've already clicked save. If I click save, a box is gonna come up and, and give it a name. And in this case, I called it Amy Tomato Sauce. I called it Amy just to help me find the, the name quite easily but if I want to be able to access these files again I want to do save to file and save it in my OneDrive and a OneDrive specifically for our friends at Niagara College but if anyone else is using the save save your file in somewhere where you are able to access it uh, at a later point and I'll, I'm just going to click cancel because I, I am saving it to the to the SQL database SQL database and in essence that means that when I jump out and want to create a recipe, I've already created this recipe, but let me just, uh, I'm gonna remove these ingredients and walk you through what I did. Yes, I wanna delete these items. Because once I've saved these sub recipes into my recipe, then I can pull them up again. So I have saved Amy tomato sauce, I've saved Amy pizza crust, I've saved Amy sausage crumb, and now if I type Amy into there, wait a second, now I can pull up that pizza crust again and it becomes my ingredient. My recipe becomes my ingredient. And that is very, very cool. So now I can put in 200 grams of pizza crust. 
let's use my search term again and I can put in, I don't know how much tomato sauce do we want on this pizza. 100 grams of tomato sauce? Sure, why not? And if I type in that, I'm going to pull up my sausage crumble. Select, and let's say we've got 75 grams of sausage crumble on there. Now, if I click on view label, boom. So now I do have to go back in there and do my edit. But if I, it, it, let's remind ourselves, if we go into reports and we go into spreadsheet, what's going to come up here? There we go. And so it is pulling out each of the ingredients that I had in my formulation and it's putting them in there in rank order. But what I like is that it's also subordinating it out so that I can see in there for me as a product developer, I now have the, I have the, uh, opportunity to um, go and apply some of those different exemptions that may be possible within the declaration of my ingredients. I realize I've got all these different spices down here and I could be pulling out aniseed, cayenne, um, black pepper and pulling those out as spices and putting them to the end. This spreadsheet view allows me the capability to see those rank orders of each of the individual ingredients. And then I can go back to my uh, core, core recipe here. Obviously I need to adjust my serving size. That is not a single serving of pizza. That's likely the whole pizza. But I can go in here and let's go back to recipe, ingredient statement, and I can see my subcomponents here for each of these core ingredients. So let's do an edit. And I should be pulling out that program generated ingredient statement. And if I go into here, I know that the first component is going to be pizza crust, pizza crust, and then components, flour. I don't need to type all purpose white unbleached water all or water. I just need to type flour. Now I have to remind myself that that is a wheat component. And so perhaps I'm better off to say wheat flour. And then what's next? Water, olive oil, salt, yeast, and bracket. What's my next ingredient? Tomato sauce. And then I can take advantage of Esha helping me see. I'm going to click on OK because I need to scroll this so I can see the rest of my ingredients here. And if I go into edit, tomato sauce. Flour is not the first ingredient in my tomato sauce. It is going to be, did I add mozzarella cheese to my, maybe I didn't have any cheese in my pizza. <laughs> So tomato sauce, that was tomatoes, basil, garlic, salt, and bracket, mozzarella cheese. Now, if you remember from our, can we get away with not having the components? We need to remind ourselves how much cheese is in there in the exemption if you recall, it was 10%. If it is greater than 10%, you need to declare the components of your cheese. And so we'd have to go and figure out who was our cheese supplier. Who was our cheese supplier? It was likely Kraft. Or maybe it was Gailey. And we would have to find out the ingredients. We would need to most likely call up our supplier and ask for the specifications on the product. If we were ordering cheese, let's say from Salerno, they would be able to provide us with the components for this. Let's go back to Splash Top. You know how to do that. You would be calling them up and then it would be milk. 
we would cut and paste it directly from what they provide us. Milk, uh, enzyme, salt, and bracket. What's the next ingredient? Sausage crumble. Bracket, pork, water, cornstarch, salt. And then you remember we can we can put spices to the end, salt, spices, end bracket, and that's my ingredients. In plain language, have I gone about and edited this properly? Tomato sauce, tomatoes, etc. Mozzarella cheese. Again, I'm getting that directly from my supplier so that I'm formatting it properly and putting it in the right order. Enzyme, salt, and last but not least, I'm just double checking that I have my ingredients capitalized in the proper order. And I click on OK, I click on OK, and now suddenly it is in the proper format and Esha has helped us facilitate this. I should clean up my allergen statement, of course. I don't have crustaceans. I don't have eggs. I don't have fish. I do have gluten. I do have milk. I don't have mollusks. I don't have mustard or peanuts or sesame seeds. I can go ahead and use these top level tabs. And there we go. Contains gluten, milk, and wheat. Ta-da! So you are able to make these multi-component recipes quite easily. It's, it's quite fun for product developers to be able to do these sorts of things. Let's say you were at a cake bakery and you had a variety of different cake bases and a variety of different icings and a variety of different sprinkle toppings. You could quickly swap back and forth between the different cake bases, the different icings, and so on to pull out your, your total... Um, ingredient declaration, other things like casseroles or frozen dinners. You've got multi-components that are pulled together in different ratios. And it's, it's very, very convenient to be able to use this sort of function within Esha. All right. So have some fun with that. Play around. And again, you know very well you can't break Esha if you're working in Splashtop. All you can do is click on the disconnect and start again because honestly, um, the more you get in and muck around, the more functions you're going to discover and the more you are going to realize that Esha is incredibly powerful and really quite useful. Some, some of the students mentioned that they found the eLearning Center and I'm just going to click through and show you the eLearning Center has all sorts of wonderful videos and tutorials on all sorts of different uh, topics. There's webinars, there's tutorials, there's cheat sheets, there's case studies. And um, I can't stress enough how I am giving you a really cursory introduction. Many people uh, make a career out of just using Esha software for being able to do labeling. And the more you study, the more you are going to get out of it. Um, I can give you uh, those initial uh, tips and tutorials to get you started. But in the long run, um, those of you who want to be really, really awesome at this, one course that we do in nutrition is just going to scratch the surface. Keep on learning. And Esha has been really uh, good to develop a lot of learning resources for you. All right. As you go along, feel free to ask questions and we will talk to you again real soon.